before we go into meat of this video, I want to talk a little bit about implicit versus explicit attribute types. So to start off, let's write an attribute. So let's create my vector equals. Let's give it a, like. A, let's make it a red. So obviously this is not correct because first of all, by default, if you do not specify what kind of data type it is, you can see that it's it treats it will treat it as a as a float value. So you can see it's basically cut off everything before the after the one. So you can make it three or whatever. You can see it, there's even gonna be a, like a swirly line before, around this one. So you see it's errors encountering with compile explicit can before vector or float. So obviously we have to just write the v before vector, and now we get all three values. And once you have declared that it's a vector value, we do not have to next time when we when we reference this value, do not have to write v at end. At the start, so at cd equals at let's just copy it my vector. You see now it's red. We do not have to write v at the start with variables. It's a little bit different. So let's create two vari values. So one int going to be one and one float. Let's make it one point like something with decimal values like that. So now we have our value variables, and in with the very value variables, you can't actually even create them without specifying what kind of data type it is. So let's say we have this int and float, and let's create the int value, int, and let's make it its value as a our float value. So you can see that we have mismatch of data type. So this is int we just created and we want to assign its float value which obviously can happen because it's a dec with the decimal values so let's just write it down and see what we get so you can see we have get the explanation mark and basically saying that we have to use explicit cast if you want to convert this float into the int value for us not to get these kind of warnings what you can do is just basically explicitly tell that we want to convert this test to the int value what we, how we can do is just with the brackets before the variable name, we have this, hey, let's make it into int, like that. So you can see, now we have converted this into the int, and now it's going without any errors. This value still is 1.534, we just, in this case, we just converted it in this line. So if we, let's say, so let's say we want to create a new float value, my float 2, and it's going to be exactly the same value as our test to like that and let's actually let's create just create the let's create the attribute so we can easily see it let's f at my flow 2 equals test you can see it's still the same number even though we cast it inside here as a int value you can see it's still the it's still with the decimal values in previous video, you saw that we used a little bit of the if statement inside Houdini Vex. Now let's talk a little bit more about it. And also, let's talk a little bit about other control flows like for and while. So for this, I have a very simple setup. So I have a sphere and this color node we can actually delete and just have a attribute wrangle node. To so start it off, let's control, let's, let's create a simple if statement. If in the brackets, so if at p dot z z is bigger or equals one and that's it for our if this is true what's going to happen so we do not have to put down a semicolon at the end of it all we have to do is let's press enter and in a curly bracket let's write what's going to happen once our p dot z is bigger than one so at cd equals let's write red so that's going to be zero one zero and zero like that in here we have to put down the semicolon because there's actually in a if statement there can be multiple lines of code so like that and you can see now that you have write it down you can see once it's once it's one or bigger than one our sphere is going to be red what's cool about this you can actually combine the conditions so let's say i want only the from one to three values to be to, for this sphere to be red, so what I can do is just in the if statement, let's write two 
it's going to go end end then at p dot z let's say you want also it to be smaller than let's say so let's say or equals with three like that so basically what we are saying now it has to, both of these have to be true it has to be bigger than one and it has to be smaller than three or equal to three so if you take a look at this and me you can see it basically limits the amount of when this sphere is going to be painted red since you have a very simple if statement all you, have, all you have can do is actually write it all down inside one line like that it's still going to work so this is kind of harder to follow up but it takes a lot less pace so that's one thing you could do and let's create more of these if so if you want to create more of these if statements with different values all you have to do is write else if in front of the next ones that's wrong like that and now what you can do is let's change the values so in here it was from 3 to 1 to 3 and let's change this change let's write in next one 3 and let's see next one 6 so it's basically going to be in steps and this is 6 so now let's write 6 and in here let's write 9 let's change the colors of it so in here it's going to be 1 and it's going to be basically change the colors RGB like that now let's take a look now it should change it three colors from the from the one to the nine like that it is good idea for us to make also a condition if none of these are true then our sphere is going to be a different color so for that we have to all we have to do is write else it's basically saying if none of these three are true then this is going to happen so in this remember the curly brackets inside curly brackets you have to write well let's make it an add cd equals let's make it the black one so with zero zero and zero like that you see now our sphere is black and if you go here let's move it in the z direction that's not z this is z now you can see we are changing color of this inside our if statement boundaries and if none of these are true our sphere is going to be black now let's talk about the while loops so for this it's a little bit different than if statement but the idea is very similar so let's first of all let's create a variable let's call it test and let's be it's going to be one so let's write while so what we do in while just like an if if this is true then what's going to happen so a while is going to loop around this logic that we write inside curly brackets until it's not true anymore so while test is smaller than 10 like that and then remember just like an if just write inside curly brackets what's going to happen so so we are saying while our test int is smaller than 10 what's going to happen so what we want to do is let's say we want to add p dot y add by one each turn it's going to loop around so what we can do is basically by the there's a easier way to write but let's just write for the for the more convenient way so we can understand at p dot y plus one so basically they're saying at p dot y equals its own value plus one so we could write it a little bit differently but whatever so you can see now how the version I have basically locked up Houdini because we are actually not doing anything to for this value to change. So you see it's saying that it's cooking but it's basically locking up our Houdini. I can't really do anything. So I'm going to press escape. So what's going on here? Since we are using this while loop, we are looping around this this command, but it's actually not it's going to go to infinity because we are actually not doing anything for it to change. So test is always basically basically one and we are not doing anything for this test to be smaller for this test to be bigger than 10 so that we would exit this loop. What we can do for this loop not to be true at some point is just add plus one for each loop that it does. So what I'm going to do is basically write test equals test plus one like that. 
then we take close it down like that you can see just take it to take a look at it where our sphere is right now you can see it's right at the right it's at the nine so basically it's from one it's basically did the nine loops up until it's test is smaller than 10 if you will write it or equals it, you see it jumped right to the 10 for us no, not to write all these long codes what you can do is go to the Houdini help and there's actually a very helpful helpful page for the Vex language reference and there's actually I already showed this and there's very useful commands that you can use for increment so you can see we just want to add one to the existing value instead of writing this test plus one you can just write test plus plus like that it's basically the same thing for our p value what you can do is basically the same thing just delete these and p dot y plus plus it's the same thing or if you want to custom values so let's say instead of one we go to two what you can do is p dot y plus equals let's say two Basically, what's going to say that its own value plus two. Now let's combine if and while together. So what I'm going to do is actually copy all of this and go back to our if wrangle node. And if you remember, let's just make it this first one a little bit bigger. So originally I write it, wrote it like that if statement, and you can easily more easily see what's going on so what I'm going to do is if this is true I'm going to delete this what we're going to do is just paste inside our while statement so we can actually combine them so basically what it says when this is true this is going to happen inside our in here in these curly brackets you can write in whatever so see we have different multiple lines of code now you can see it does take quite a bit of space so what I'm going to do is let's make it a little bit smaller so i'm going to where there's only one curly bracket i'm going to delete those lines also in here it's still going to work we could also collapse it inside only one line but then it's going to be really hard to follow so for now this is going to be fine and now what i'm going to do is just copy this what we write inside and let's make it also for the rest of these statements so just delete this so we had you can see what always follow what we have copied so we have copied with the curly brackets so basically all of this can go you can basically paste inside here like that and let's change these values so here we added one let's add two and let's add three and for our else statement let's just move it to the let's say that our position is going to be zero so at p equals zero 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 like that now let's make sure we do not have any errors in writing this so make sure that everything is correct and if you have write everything correctly so let's take a look what's going to let's select our sphere and let's move it in a z axis so you can see now that it's one to three it's going to be ten so that's going to go to the twenty and after that it's going to be thirty and even it's not nothing else is none of these are true the sphere is still going to be at z, going to basically be staying at zero you can move it where you want it's going to stay at zero with the for loops the syntax is a little bit different so let's start with let's make our cd color let's make it maybe red Now let's make a if statement. So now inside this if statement, let's create a for loop. To write our for loop, the syntax is going to be a little bit different, but basically going to do the same thing. So let's write for in the brackets. First of all, we have to just like in a while we created our integer value which is was test so let's write in test equals one then with colon let's write our test has to be smaller than 10 just like in while loop 
smaller than 10 for this for to work for loop to be active so write test is smaller than 10 and then after another one let's test plus plus basically go iterate it so now let's put down a curly bracket and what's going to happen while this for loop is active what we're going to do is add p dot let's say x let's say plus equals one then close it down like that sometimes attribute wrangle node will complain that we do not use the explicit casting like under this equal sign there was a green like a so a swirly line so if that it's usually because we have only one equal sign so with two equal signs it's basically gonna ask if you are that number so if you are that number one it's going to work so but for this also one works so just take a look if it really bothers you so you can change it to two equal signs so now basically what we have done is let's take a look at the top we have iterated our loop for the for 10 times basically this text plus plus remember basically says add to this value plus one so plus one after loop is finished the next one because let's say we have loop is going it's going to add one so let's say our so let's add it to the let's add text is equal to the two like that to one so you can see in the first loop so let's say our test is one and our test for this to run has to be smaller or equal to one so we know that it's going to so this loop is going to happen right now because right now our test is one so it's going to move just by one you see it's just a one step and after that loop is finished and it's going to exit out of it so loop is no longer going to happen but that's it for this tutorial hope you found something useful and see you next time